You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again to see what's going on in the world of volatility. Yes, it is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-compelling network upon which so many of you are just binging these days, just sucking it all down. Hey, we're coming off the, the hottest month in the history of the network, and we have quite a history. We go back to the primordial ooze days of doing this back in January of 2007 when there was no real iTunes, at least not the way we think of it today. There definitely was no iPhone. You had to have an RSS reader to get a lot of the big podcasts. <laughs> Super early days. There wasn't a freaking person talking about uh, finance on podcasts, let alone options. We thought, let's try this crazy thing. And here we are 15 plus years later, still knocking out of the park. Thanks to all of you out there who help continue to make the network just such a beast these days. <laughs> we love you all. If you're one of the legion of on-demand listeners, hey, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. I say it all the time. We have a lot of reviews going back, oh, 15 years. But the new stuff, you can see it's more important than ever. There's more people discovering the content these days than pretty much ever before. So if you like what you hear, rate and review. If you don't like it, send an angry letter to maybe the guys at the pit. Why not? Because they love that stuff. Over there. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want more in your life. You need more than the shows we're coming at you with on the network. You want pro Q&As. You want options oddities coming up a little bit later today. What sort of weird stuff made our radar this week? Spoiler alert, a whole bunch of fun stuff. We usually barely have time to cram it all into an hour. So a lot to talk about there. Giveaways, whatever show you want live in your ear holes, whenever you want it, and a whole bunch more, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to begin that journey to the dark side. Welcome to all the new folks joining us over there as well. Speaking of welcoming folks, let's see who we're welcoming on to the old Volatility Views program this week. You know, it's kind of fitting because it is, I think to put it mildly, a dark day for the markets, maybe a dark day for society as a whole. <laughs> so who better to have on than the man from the dark and stormy shores of Maine? None other than the rock lobster himself. Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi, 
from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show, sir. It is good to be back in this uh, in this day of all, in this day of 40-year high inflation. 40-year high. Yeah, good stuff there, huh? That, that's just good. Great for society, right there. <laughs> I think it. I think it really. I think it really helps everybody. You know, it really makes things. Uh, <laughs> makes things work. <laughs> now we used to joke about that photo from uh, pre World War II, right? The little the people rolling the barrel, the Deutschmarks to buy the loaf of bread. We're not quite there yet, but uh, we're certainly feeling some pain here. I'll gi- I'll give you a little anecdotal taste of inflation, Mister Rock Lobster, really quickly. We went out recently for a place. It might be a local chain. Maybe it's a national chain. Kind of one of those make-your-own-stir-fry places. You know, you, you put all the stuff in the uh-huh. bowl. They cook it up. My kids loved it since he was literally, like, ever since he was literally, like, you know, make, make his own bowl. He felt big. All that kind of fun stuff. So we used to go there all the time. And you used to be able to get a bowl. I think it was, like, eight, nine bucks. You'd make whatever. If you wanted to go crazy and get, like, unlimited bowls, it was, like, something like 12 bucks, right? If you haven't been there probably, like, a year, year and a half, went there recently, made one for myself. Just me, just one bowl. Just wanted to get one to see how it's been for a while. I'm picking it up to go. Not even a, you know, not even anything else. And they ring me up twenty seventy five or something. I was like, what? The f-? <laughs> I was like, it's just me. <laughs> so yeah, they have effectively almost doubled in price. And they said, oh yeah, we apologize, sir. The new prices are orders of magnitude higher. And I was like, wow, there you go. Another example of inflation just punching you in the face, sir. When you least expect, you just want to get a bowl of stir fry. And it's suddenly two uh, x. I used to joke about the my euro indicator, the cost of a euro over there in Greek Town down the street. But now I might have to switch it to the stir fry bowl indicator. What do you think? Uh, it, it might be. I just you know when I went back to Chicago two weeks ago, just like the cost. I mean, you have to think about trying to run a restaurant post pandemic. Like, how the heck do you run one? You had the the COVID just madness, the shutdown, open shut, like, <laughs> and then. The cost of food skyrockets. Um, I knew things had changed and the world will never be the same when I went to Ceres for breakfast and they weren't open. (laughs) So literally 30 years of going to Chicago, either living there or going back to visit. And every time I would see the same waitresses I had seen for 30 years. They must all be dead. They were 100 about 30 years ago, <laughs> those waitresses. So. And, there, and there's some still there. Um, uh, and they were closed. And I'm like, wow, that you have to do some serious city. I like, you know, I'm not it's not a referendum on, you know, the current mayor or whatever, but. In order for a series to close down for breakfast, <laughs> it's like I, I, I don't know. I don't even the know raging, the raging alcoholics who kept that place going in the morning and stuff, even they weren't enough, you know. Because you got to be seriously hardcore to go to series, get one of those ridiculous well drinks at like nine a.m. in the morning. But yes, yes, there were well, those folks. Had, you know, there was food. There, there was food there. Was food there too. But, yeah. So anyway, that's like, and and I, I can see why, like, very difficult. So you know, and then I'm looking at the inflation number now, and I'm like, wow. You realize um, how, uh, you know, how how the economy is wedded to the price of oil, you know, and if listen, if you want if you want oil prices to go up for the Green New Deal or something, so it pushes everybody to electric cars. I mean, I I guess it's succeeding because you're you're getting runaway prices at this. That's the one Uh, silver lining of all this. Right. Maybe uh, maybe we'll stop. I walked down the street yesterday, saw a massive Hummer going by. I was like, maybe that'll and it wasn't the electric Hummer. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, maybe those will start to go away. We'll see. We know it won't go away, listeners. It's the show, so let's get into a little bit of the old volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. everybody welcome to the volatility review the portion of the show where we do just that we break down the week that was and indeed still is some of all trading and trending and analysis and all sorts of fun perspectives not a lot of fun to be found today we should bring uncle mike onto the show because i'd love to get his opinion this is definitely not an uncle mike type of day listeners uh, the markets are i think fair to say blood red today 
S&P threatening 3% to the dark side, 2.85% or so right now is where we are, right around the 3,900 level. Let's see, how low do we get? I think that's pretty much, we're right at the lows for the set. Yeah, we kind of hit the 3,900 level a couple of times and bounced off it. But now we're back down. I think this is the third or fourth time that we're back down at this level. So that probably doesn't bode well for for main, remaining above it for much longer. Who knows? Maybe we'll bounce and the day will end green. But it doesn't seem like it's that kind of day, listeners. S&P off 2.85%. The NASDAQ off over 3, 3.5%. The Dow, the laggard off of paltry 2.5%, listeners. What's spooking everybody? Well, as Mr. Rock Lobster was alluding to earlier, what we were saying throughout the week on shows like the option block was the thing everyone was kind of fixating on this week was this CPI number. We all know inflation at the end of the day is the name of the game. How bad is it? Is my stir fry indicator just off the charts or is that actually a meaningful measure? And it seems like given the number we got today, maybe that is a bit of a meaningful measure. 8.6% inflation year on year in May. Yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, back it seems antiquated and quaint now. We all forget, you know, when uh, Greenspan was roundly condemned for stepping in what he termed the irrational exuberance in the market back in the late 90s. And he kind of pumped the brakes. That was kind of the Fed's thing. The Fed was inflation was job one for the Fed for a long time. And I mean, a lot of people took issue with that. That's certainly a contentious thing. A lot of people thought maybe Greenspan pumped the brakes on the dot com boom a little bit too early out there. That's certainly a viewpoint people can have out there. Then we've seen regimes since then, certainly in the modern era, kind of say, eh, you know, what, what's this inflation thing? We're kind of we're, we're going to let the economy run a little bit or certainly let the stimulus go when the economy was looking not as good. And we're going to pump the accelerator a little bit. And this inflation thing, it'll all work out in the wash. It's, what do they kept saying, right? It's transitory. It's transitory. 8.6%. That's not feeling to a lot of people like it's transitory right now. We won't get into a political diatribe. We don't need to get that. You can go to any 24-hour news channel or go to Twitter, for God's sakes. You can get enough of that. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. I think people on both sides of the aisle are very angry about this number, maybe for different reasons. But either way, it's hurting everybody. So, yeah, this is what's spooking the markets. And as a result, we're seeing our vol friends getting a little bit frothier, getting a little bit larger today. Spikes coming into the start of the show was 29 and a quarter, up nearly four points, three and three quarters points from where it was this time last week, let's see, how low did we get oh, out there in the interim? We got down as low as about 24 and a quarter listeners. So we're up five points from the Nader this past week. Quite the upswing involved. Vix Cash, similar deal, was at about 28 and three quarters when we kicked off the show up about three and a half points from where we were this time last week. VVIX, this measure we've been talking about for a while, can it possibly persist below the triple digit level you know that was our question of the week a couple of weeks ago we've been down there for a couple of weeks now this is the longest period we've been below 100 since the start of the pandemic certainly a uh, back up above it now so our dalliance with double digit vbix at least for now is over we're up nine and a half points at about 102 and a quarter when we kicked off the show will we end the day still in triple digits we'll see probably not going to hang out there for too long but back in triple digits right now. The Viking, a.k.a. V-Spikes, same deal, starting to bounce again. It's back up to about 109. That hit its low for the year a little over a week ago, but 107.99. So pretty much 108. That's the lowest since inception. We're at about a 109 right now. So the V-Spikes still shockingly low, I think, is the, is the technical term out there. So a lot to unpack. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, I know this was the day you said you were waiting for all week as well. This was the inflation number. This is when the rubber was going to meet the road. What are your thoughts on everything we're seeing today and the vol markets response? Sir? Yes, I uh, in the uh, my Option Pit newsletter that we sent out to our subscribers uh, that came out this morning. I, you know, I thought they leaked the CPI number. Basically, <laughs> Look, I, like yesterday, how your pit that? subscribers, they were in first. They have an in over there at uh, in D.C. Um, I don't know. I just well, you know, my job is to watch things, you know, and I'm like, OK, well, let's see. How about that candle? The last two hours of the day yesterday, um, that was a pretty serious sell off considering the news had not come out yet. Um, so uh, and I I. At the beginning of the week, I thought, well, the number won't be so bad. And when you look at it, you know, if you if you look at the inflation number, everything's connected to, to really 
like where oil or gas is just a big input, right? So for right now, that's what we got. So, and, um, and I don't know when OPEC starts pumping, but there will be a price, right? Where OPEC has a lot of oil in the ground and, you know, do you pump it when gas is 120 or do you pump it when it's 50, right? So, you know, they want to try to get some production going right now. And they've still been kind of, you know, for whatever reason waiting. So, um, I think that's, that's a big part of it. Uh, the fact that the Fed is actually, I think, you know, we've talked about this on the show for what, 10 years that we have this constant enabling by the Fed, this MMT crap that they do, like, you know, and you can, everybody is poo-pooing and you can do it forever and it'll be fine. And clearly that is not the case. So whatever the reason you think for oil prices going up, and a big part of it is the, the global politics right now, but it can't be that continually printing money has been good, right? Um, and right now they're hoping they can put the genie back in the bottle. Um, so from a vol point of view, from a stock point of view, you know, can stocks go up when inflation is rising? Um, yes, they can. Um, you know, there are still companies that will make money and stuff like that. Um, just like what happened in the 70s and the early 80s. And obviously, uh, the early 80s is probably one of the best uh, buying opportunities, um, you know, for stocks in, I don't know, probably like two decades, right, up until that point. So you get to catch the bull market after. So uh, the problem now is, you know, there's there has been so many things that have taken up the news cycle. So, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're here to talk volatility, but the vol traders still look at what's going on and they're like, what, and I guess too, when you're trading volatility, if you're a vol trader, right, is what's new, right? So what is new under the sun? And, you know, right now, if you're looking at the inflation news, was it unexpected? Everybody can see the price that, you know, oil prices are going up. Was it unexpected that the number would come in hot? You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think so, especially <laughs> the market's been pretty weak uh, all week for the most part. But when you look at volatility, volatility is interested in pricing a range, right? And if you're looking at uh, VIX right now, I was this is what I was talking to my students yesterday. You know, the at the money volatility in July at the beginning of the week, the straddle in VIX at the money started, I think, the week at about 570. Um, now with VIX up uh, with the future trading right around 29, um, that straddle is up to about seven bucks. So you definitely, you know, and as VIX goes up, right, the straddle goes up, the price of the options are going to go up. And you're definitely getting a lift in vol now. I mean, today is a fairly big lift. But you know, even the way I'm looking at in live all the sigma for uh, July, the volatility for the term is only up, I don't know, four points at showtime. So, I mean, it's it's definitely going up and you have a seven point uh, straddle value, which is a 14 point range. So now, you know, for July, the bottom of the range is probably 21, right around there, or 22 and the top of the range is 34, 35. So, um, Pretty healthy range now, but you know you have to be realistic. Like, okay, you have a seven dollar range now, um, because VIX was already high when this started. Remember, all this action didn't start at a twelve or a sixteen or an eighteen or a twenty. This all started when VIX was already twenty four, already in the danger zone. We didn't even get any Kenny Loggins today. Um, so, you know, it's and it's it's hard to make money trading VIX. Once you're in zone four, the higher quartile, I mean, if you're looking at it. So uh, I bought some July call spreads at the beginning of the week, and it was the 3045, and they were about a dollar, I don't know, about a dollar 40, something like that. I got to look. And they're at 50 cents, you know, and okay, you know, granted, it's 50 cents. I'm not going to complain. Um, they're trading around, yeah, they were about a buck, probably about a buck 65, and they're trading. Um, about 225. So maybe a little more than that. So but but the point is like you're 
when vol is already so high, you're, you're, what is your expectation on making money on it? So at this point, the market has to really crash and do something. Um, you know, it's certainly down, but if you're looking at how the market for vol prices a range, we've already pri we got a pretty good range price. You know, we were priced almost six dollars on Monday, right? And you got to be realistic. So VIX was twenty four. It was actually twenty four, probably yesterday morning, right? Twenty four and change. It's trading twenty eight sixty four. Um, it was pricing a six dollar range till July, and now we've got we basically are we're sold off five percent from that level. Uh, SPX and VIX is 28.68, and we can't. It it was maintaining some bid all day long, so we'll see what happens here into the close. But, um, but I guess the long story short is, even though VIX was relatively low, um, the fact that you know, the futures were in contango, you kind of had that the sort of the normal pattern of vol, where the back month vol is a little higher. Um, the time premium is there. The forward vol number is there. And you just had higher. So vol was already starting at a pretty high level. I guess that's the short answer. And it's definitely higher now. No no question that the premiums are up. The vol's up a little bit. You know, but for a 3% move, I, it doesn't feel like the market is pricing a sustained 3% move. Um, what it's certainly pricing, and this is, I think, a subject that Tucson and I and all of us in regular option block have talked about is, that big run on the upside is not there anymore. Like when we had those 200 point, like those two day in a row, 200 point moves or stuff like that. I think really what's happening uh, is that part of SPX it's, it's there, but it's not, um, it doesn't, I don't think it has near the bid that it had before. So if you're looking for a quick move back up, you can't really make the case for it. Like the Fed put, where is it going to go? The Fed, the Fed has to be involved now in, in inflation fighting. So, um, and you would assume just like you go into the noodle bowl, right? <laughs> You're like, okay, well, instead of going there, you know, now I'll go there one time less, you know, a year or two times less a year. And you know, like as, as well as anybody, you you have less demand for something and then prices eventually will come down because, you know, um, and it will start to slow economic growth or slow something. So the price mechanism, as long as we don't mess with it, hopefully will work. If the Fed continues to stop spending, it will work. But from a vol point of view, you know, unless there's something new to the picture, right now we have the inflation picture pretty tough. This whole Ukraine-Russia thing and the embargoes and the mess with oil, all that stuff was known yesterday and at the beginning of the week. So none of that has really gone away. Um, and also you had a consumer confidence number was ridiculously low. Um, what was that Michigan number? I think it was a 40 or 50 year low or the lowest number since they took, um, uh, since they've been doing the study. So like all of these things, none of this is really positive for an upside pop in stocks. And today too, at all this, like, and oil is down today, right? So if you look at, uh, oil futures, oil stocks, um, they're down a little bit. So my guess um, would be that you would start to see OPEC be a little more aggressive and pumping more oil at this point. And any oil major that has excess ability, excess capacity, which I don't think the U.S. has right now, I think the U.S. is engaged in probably grabbing all the oil, pumping every oil well it has, uh, because you want to bring that oil to market when the price is high. Um, so that's that's, I think, that's where we are. I think VIX can certainly stay above 20. Uh, it's been basically above 20 almost all year, as far as I can tell, uh, which is actually a lot more than 2021, uh, except for, so this is where, you know, this this COVID era volatility hasn't gone away, right? Um, and I don't think we've declared the pandemic over, but it's certainly, it's hardly in the news anymore. We had that monkeypox thing for about two days and that didn't last very long. So, um, from just a straight VIX and vol point of view, the fact that everything was already pretty pricey, everybody forgets 24 vol is the top quartile, uh, 24 and above for VIX. So it's a pretty expensive place to begin with. Then, and I think this is where we're here. So I think we have a lot, I think we just have more of this, right? We're gonna have more of VIX in the 20s, um, probably less upside for SPX, 
we hover around this, you know, 3,800, 4,200 range for potentially for a while. If, if things get marketably worse from the inflation point of view, or there's another real supply shock where prices really take that other leg up, you know, then you'll probably see um, a lower SPX. So I think the number one thing you're looking at now is how high do oil prices get? And if, you know, the oil supplying nations that have the ability to pump another million barrels a day start doing so, uh, which I would think they would want to start doing, to be quite honest. Um, it would it would surprise me if they don't start jumping, pushing production up um, within the next month, especially given the price that they could get for oil right now. I personally would be surprised if that didn't happen, uh, that OPEC doesn't start pumping a little more. So we'll see. But um, right now, I think that's what we got. I think this environment will be around for a while, a very ranging environment, which is very hard to buy options in and probably easier to find data positive trades. Um, and I think probably really difficult to trade VIX. Like I have relatively for myself, very light positions in the vol products right now. Uh, you would, I would think you would, I would have more, but since I don't see a lot of potential money trading VIX just right here, um, because where's it going to go? Is it going to go back to 20 by next week? I don't think so. Right. Maybe 24 possibly. Um, I could be surprised, but it's a. I just think it's a difficult trade up here. The longer it spends in zone four and really doesn't do anything, it's just kind of a grinding trade. There's really no, there's no direction anywhere. Um, and there's really no relief in sight until the supply chain thing gets, you know, starts to address, although China is coming back online, so that should be getting better. Uh, but they're also going to demand more oil, right, if they're driving around. So that should drive oil prices up. Uh, Again, OPEC needs to produce, and the Russians aren't leaving uh, the Ukraine. So the, all these things that have driven the market to weird places, none of them are going away anytime soon. So just get used to this 3,800, 4,200, like, oh, my gosh. And look for bargains in the meantime. Uh, I think there's a lot. there are a lot of stocks that are trading uh, pretty inexpensively. Uh, you could just look at what Intel. That's kind of a your old Intel pit. Uh, that's trading at levels like what 2017 or something like that. It's been since it's been what what is it 40 bucks or something. So I haven't dipped my toe in. Oh yeah, it's sub 40. It's 39 dollars. So <laughs> AMD is worth more than Intel right now. So I think if you look for bargains, if you're looking for bargains and have a again uh, want some kind of longer term uh, view, this is a good time uh, to start looking. Um, but, uh, I don't, I don't think this is going to be over anytime soon because there's nothing really the fed can do about it. Um, as far as, uh, they, they need to, they need to be seen to address the inflation thing. They have to start QT or at least stop buying bonds and just got to let things work, get, let some price action work the other way. And it's been, it's been 40 years. Um, and what did, how long did it take Volcker to engineer that two years? And we just started. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been, when well, they slowed down the bond buying program last year, thankfully they started stopping it. And what we're, uh, we're a month into them not buying bonds anymore. And, uh, they're about ready to start selling some. And, you know, we're, the market was down like five, 6%. So I think they have to keep it up. Uh, it could be a tough love environment. And uh, at, at least for right now, I think volatility VIX is probably fair for what's going on. Um, but for it to take another leg higher, I think another shoe has to drop uh, and the market has to take a, you know, another dip low or what. But hey, listen, it's only 130. It could happen by the end of today. <laughs> could happen as we speak, sir. A lot to unpack. Our chat debating many things over there debating the various impacts of inflation. A lot of people saying they're going to go electric with their next car. I get it. I think this this type of environment, people lose sight of that when oil's around 30 to 40 bucks. Like, oh, I'm going to buy the monstrous biggest thing I can get, right? Because gas is under two bucks. When all of a sudden it's uh, threatening six bucks here in the Chicagoland region, then yeah, you start thinking, maybe I don't need the massive uh, church van that I thought I did. <laughs> also talking, Mr. Rock Lobster, I mentioned my stir fry metric for inflation. They're also talking other ones, including two-ply, toilet paper, apparently. They're, you're getting less 
for the same amount now. So they're sneaking inflation in that way, sir, giving, selling you smaller rolls for the same price. So our chat very outraged around that, sir. So there you go. Inflation hits you where you least expect it and where it's the most damaging, sir. In stir fry and in two ply. What say you, Mr. Rock Lobster? Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess everybody could always use a little less toilet paper. So I guess that's just what you're going to have to do. You're just going to have to. You're going to have to reduce the sheets. That's the only thing I can bidets say. Bidets for everyone. No, that's the thing. We need to buy bidet manufacturers. That's that's the new rage. That's where the meme stock action is going to be. Forget <laughs> these uh, two ply makers. That's old school. That's old technology. <laughs> Let's keep on rolling. Let's get away from that quickly. Let's keep on rolling out to the land of the volatility surface and that futures curve getting back. It wasn't quite backward when we uh, kicked off the show. I'll have to go pull it up again right now. Maybe things have changed since then. When we kicked off the show, we had that June future obviously looking a little bit more frothy than it was this time last week, up 2.3 points, and the July future up 1.6 1.6 points. So that front portion of the curve, obviously, where you're going to see a lot of the, the inflection point, really, of the curve, where you're going to see the most action as a result. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there in the land of the volatility futures? And Oh, and also, because you requested it, and some of our chat have mentioned it, too, uh, you requested it. I did shake him awake in the green room so you could have you could have an accompaniment while you do your vol futures rundown, sir. There yes. he is. There he is. Our boy, Mr. Loggins. He's controversial. I won't have him run throughout the whole show, but he can go through your Vol Future segment, sir. Yes. So as amazing as it sounds, we do not have any backwardation on the curve. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. If you just say all the things, you know, anecdotally we just talked about, right? Just You just yeah. threw them out there with no other context to them. You'd say, oh, of course the curve is backward. Of course. It is not. And that's that was one of my points. Like, Normally, when you see backwardation, you see that's when the you know short-term realized vol expectation is very high. And listen, we're at a twenty-eight already, so we're <laughs> it's like the market's saying, "Hey, you know what? High vol forever." That's what the curve is saying. You're like, okay, you know, normally whenever I see contango, the you know the the vol curve says higher vol in the future, but that's just a function of you know forward vol. Um, and is normal. And normally when you have a curve in Contango, you're expecting VIX to drop. So, like, <laughs> all I can say is we're at 28, but the curve is saying vol is not going to, won't be as high next week. That's how I take that. Well, that's that's how I'm leaning. I'm getting rid of most of my upside today. I still have some left, but I'll probably exit all of it next week. And if I need to buy more next week, I certainly will. So, but as a from a trade point of view the curve is in a little in a little contango uh and i just i read that always read the same way when the curve's in contango i want to lean a little short vix uh might not work today but it will probably work tomorrow and into next week so again with the seven seven dollar range in the at the money straddle and vix out to july 20th um that's a pretty hefty amount of underlying movement um, and with the curve facing that way, I still expect down. I know I hate saying it because it's like the, you know, I'm like rubbing my eyes with all of the red on the screen, but you know, that's, that's what the vault, that's how the vault traders are, are pricing. And those are the prices they're paying. So I got to go with history and say, we're going to see a lower VIX next week. I did warn you, sir. Did I not? Last week, I said when I bought those 22 puts in VIX, we were definitely not getting there. (laughs) (laughs) That was my gift to the market. Everyone who had an upside in vol. And so there you go. You're welcome. You had a brief moment because of me to uh, get off some of your upside. Again, it's a brief moment, listeners. This is kind of a narrative we've hit on many times. How many times have we said this now, Mr. Rock Lobster, over the past two years since the pandemic, right? You have upside in VIX. You got to kind of get while the getting's good. It doesn't hang out for too long. We'll see. Obviously, the day is still young here today. We could see another leg down, and that narrative could change. But right now, things are playing out kind of how you would expect in this type of environment. We're seeing a pretty aggressive sell-off. VIX is moving, but the VIX futures are kind of, eh, yeah, they're moving, but, you know, we're not even backward, as we were just saying. So that does kind of put a, a bit of a ceiling on how much upside you can expect, at least in the near term. But we see a second leg down, again, that could change. But for right now... Heading into the weekend. If you have some upside in VIX, maybe you start unloading it here. Let's get on out. Speaking of options in the world of vol, 
of all products here. And let's, let's, uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Loggins. He will be back. Don't worry, listen, he'll be back. I know some people, some people for whatever reason get up in arms with the Loggins. Most people love him. A lot of our hardcores love him. There's a few outliers out there who find him distracting to the core material. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, we, we asked him to go back to the green room. He'll be back, I think, though, for fun because it's very appropriate. He has to join us for the crystal ball, which is the danger zone these days. So he'll be back. A little bit later in the show, all you Loggins lovers. <laughs> Let's go on out now to the land of the options. Let's start in the land of Spike's options. Just had Matt on the show last week talking about how they're juicing up the futures to get ready for the new ETFs that are coming. And hopefully that's going to tighten up the options even more. Once you have that, the three legs of the stool, the futures, the options, and the ETFs, then you really have an ecosystem for a product. And we can expect to see more volume, tighter markets as a result. So we're kind of right now in wait and see mode for the ETFs. They're supposed to be coming any week now. So let's let's hope we see these. It's pretty much straightforward stuff as you might expect. A straight up kind of VXX analog, but for spikes. And then of course, I think it's a one and a half levered as well. So nothing super crazy, nothing you have to really have a hard time understanding. It very much parallels what we see in the rest of the vol space. So hopefully that'll help Drive a little bit of paper out there. Let's go quick top five in Spike's layer. Now, number five are the June 80 puts. Wow. <laughs> 80 puts. Okay. <laughs> number four, we have the June 85 calls. That makes, dare I say it, a little bit more sense than the 80 puts. Number three, the June 25 puts. Number two, July par calls. Number one in Spike's options right now, the June 70. So, Outside of the 25 puts, it's a whole bunch of nonsense. <laughs> let's see if let's see if VIX options are following suit. What they are doing right now, listeners, is doing a whole heck of a lot of paper. And we are seeing this kind of seismic shock to the system it is driving some numbers out there. VIX options, as of a few minutes ago, already surpassing their ADV, which has come down over the past week. It's down about 37,000 contracts to 546,000. So it was kind of a light week leading into today. That's not exactly surprising. A lot of people were keeping their powder dry, waiting for the big number today. 586,000 contracts on the tape, so already beating the ADV by 40,000 contracts, and the day is still young. So going to be an action-packed day on the VIX options front. Let's break down our top 10 positions out there right now, then we'll sink our teeth into what's been trading this week. Number 10 listeners, cost you 141,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX options. And I get you to the SEP 75. So once again, our friend who loves the 75 strike, he has kind of carved out positions on almost every expiration month. <laughs> and we're kicking off our top 10 with his September position. Number nine, a buck 44, the June 30 calls. The dare I say it, reasonable <laughs> 30 calls. Number eight, a buck 47 of the July 20 puts. Number seven, buck 51 of the June 22 puts. Number six, a buck fifty-five of the Aug seventy-fives. Our friend hanging out there as well. Number five, a buck seventy of the July thirty calls. Then we go off on a little bit of a put strip here. Number four, a buck eighty-three of the June twenty-three puts. Number three, buck ninety-four of the June twenty-five puts. Number two, two hundred and two thousand of the June twenty-four puts. And number one, we said it last week. He didn't just not take it off. He added more to this position. The Ox 75s, 352,000 contracts open out there. Remember, it was a quarter of a million for a long time. He added 100,000 more a little over a week ago. So there is a whole heck of a lot of upside out there in VIX options right now. Let's go out. So well, speaking of upside, this is an interesting, interesting tweet. This just came in from our buddy, Mr. Scott Nation. He's been on the on network many times. And we're going to talk about it. Excuse me, in the in the ball voicemail. Let's get to it now. Scott just tweeted Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster. He said, Where did the 50 cent guy in VIX options go? Is he broke or made a billion during Valmageddon and is on a beach? I think we all have come down on the ladder, Mr. Rock Lobster. He's he's living that beach life now. What do you think? Uh yeah, because I think he's didn't he sell those contracts at 40 bucks? <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> so. talk about waiting until the optimal moment. He didn't quite get the exact high, but he got pretty freaking close. Yeah, well, like whatever his sale was, was like holding a contract from 50 cents to $40, easily probably one of the greatest trades I've ever seen anybody do. So, and the reality is with vault, with the vault so high, there ain't no 50 cent options. You can't be 50 cent without 50 cents. Like, what, what, what are you buying for 50 cents? The pars? That's like, that's all you can buy. So, the reason why 50 cent isn't around is because he, 
because we haven't got back to a 13 VIX yet. That's why. Yeah, I don't think the 100 strike fits into his model as well as where he was last. Was he on? Wasn't he on the 40, 45s last time? I believe. Uh, no, dude. I think he bought like the 25s, the 25s or 30s for 50 cents. Or it could have been even less. I think it was the 25s because when he closed those, I think that closed at a peak VIX of. Maybe VIX was 65 settle. Maybe I'm thinking so, of the 45. That was what he sold them out for. I knew there was a 40 in there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he sold he sold the contract for 45 bucks, I believe. But he only paid 50 cents for them. So I, I think the strike, they were struck at like 20 because when he bought them, VIX was like 13 bucks or something like that. So they were either the 20s or the 25s, uh, somewhere around that line. I could go back and look at history, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Well, speaking of history, let's see what kind of history we got this week. Spoiler alert, no 50 cents popping up on our radar this week, listeners. Let's see what we did see from a VIX options perspective. Uh, Today, like we said, a pretty active day, 586,000 contracts coming across the VIX tape out there. Let's do a quick top five for today. Uh, Number one out there today, listeners, we got 41,500 of the June 26 puts, followed by about 35,000 of the July 22 puts. 30,000 pretty much exactly of the October 22 puts. Number four, 27,000 of the July 35s. And rounding out the top five today, 27,000 of the June 25 puts. Mr. Rock Lobster, all of our top five except for one on a day when VIX is not quite surging, but certainly moving up. Pretty much four of the top five all puts. Does that surprise you, sir, or is that kind of what you expected? That kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier, where VIX is not exactly maybe giving you all the upside you might want on a day like today. Yeah, I mean, I let's I you know I I bought a call spread and it was I when VIX was actually Monday when it was relatively low. What was it? Twenty? It was trying to get below twenty five, trading twenty four, maybe even twenty. Um, and yeah, I'm getting fifty cents, sixty cents, sixty five cents out of a thirty forty five call spread. <laughs> That's a fifteen point wide call spread. So, like, it's hard to ring the cash register here, you know. So. How do you ring it? Do you do you buy uh, do you buy uh, E mini against your <laughs> long VIX, right? If you want to kind of unwind it, but keep the you know keep the contracts. But so it's not a it's it's not a it's not an easy thing to try to uh, to unwind at this point because you're just not getting paid very much. So yeah, it does not surprise me at all that people are pining into puts. Does not surprise me at all. There you go, listeners. If you needed more anecdotal evidence that. Today, it's kind of just another VIX upside day in this weird market we're in where everyone's just going right to the dark side. Then there you go for the top five today, lighting up on the put side. Yesterday, you can kind of see why the ADV shrunk over the rest of the week. Yesterday, a pretty quiet day, 391,000 contracts on the day, even though the most active contract was larger than what we're seeing already today. 51,000 of the June 24 puts, followed by about 22,000 of the June 25 puts. Number three, got to go down all the way down to number three to find our first call, the June 35s, 15,000 of those. Number four, 11,000 of the June 28s. And rounding out the top five yesterday, the June 25 calls with about 11,000 contracts. Wednesday, so far the busiest day of the week, but again, today is not done. 692,000 contracts on the tape for Wednesday, so close to 700K, pretty active day. We have the big dog on Wednesday, a buck 15 of the July 50s, five O's. Maybe that's your 50 cent is playing now. He's going to the strike, Mr. Rock Lobster. He's picking up the 50 strike. So instead of 50 cent, maybe we should call him 50 strike now, sir. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I guess we can. Even the 50s are 80 cents. Now. So <laughs> no, he, says he must have bought them earlier this week. He's, so. Yeah, you got them on he, Wednesday. He, yeah. So he, yeah, he bought them when they were cheap. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, the 50 strike for 50 cents is nowhere near as appetizing as the 25 for 50 cents. I'm just, you know, call me crazy, but that's that's right. I'm on that. <laughs> Looks like you put them on for 48 cents, sir. So that's pretty close to 50 cents. I don't know, 95,000 times on on Wednesday. I'm just saying, He's, maybe that's where he, maybe that's what Scott was talking about. Maybe 50 cent is back. He's just a wee bit higher in the strike range now. So just a wee bit. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, he used to, I, and I, as I recall, he liked to play with a little more duration. I, I just let me see here. What's the duration you have on that contract again? I got to see that. These I'm are the Julys, the Julys that went up on one. Yeah, I don't That's think this little, is it. I'm joking, but it sounds funny it, nonetheless. It, it does. It, well, now we have to call him 48, which is not yes. quite. It's not doesn't have the same cachet. 
<laughs> yeah, 48 Cent doesn't, uh, doesn't have the same ring. What do you think, listeners? Is this him back playing for 48 Cent on the 50s? It would have a certain ring to it if that was the case. Uh, the number two trade on Wednesday, a buck 08 of the July 21 puts. Let's see, was this... Don't see a spread with these 50s. They just went up late 95,000 times. <laughs> uh, the only thing I could see, yeah, no, there's 33,000 of the 22 puts went up around the same time, but those had something else going on. That was a, it's like a roll or, yeah. So, yeah, I think these were just straight up. Uh, Bucko 8, though, of the July 21 puts did go up on that same day, so it could be a bit of a funky risk reverse. I'm not seeing those. Here, they, Here's the July 20 put. They went up. Oh, they did up go up the same time. So he looks like he did the 21 puts against the 50 calls. Looks like he did it, sold the puts for 35 cents, bought the calls for 48. So he did that whole thing for 13 cents. So you like it better as a risk reversal, Mr. Rock Lobster, for 13 cents? Um, This is like, so the VIX risk reversals are literally my least favorite trick. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going to take a dim view of this one. And, How did I know, sir? Yeah, I know you it's just you can always sell a VIX put. You know, it's like so if you buy a call in VIX and VIX goes up, you have no problems, right? The problem with Contango and everything else is it just it just it wreaks havoc on it wreaks havoc on a short put. So it's like you can always sell that put if you want. <laughs> so selling the put, it's not like in an equity, you know, and I keep telling my students that. Um and yeah, you you would be totally loaded if VIX goes flying. I totally get it. You you would be you would be long, long, long. The problem is, of course, too, is because when you sell the put as well, vol expands so much that the put really doesn't collapse much. So you know, it's it's such a it is such a backwards thing selling puts in the VIX. Um, you know, I, I like it when maybe VIX is much lower or, you know, in least zone one or something. But up here, it's just it's such a difficult trade, I think. But but meanwhile, he's, the calls are 75 and 85. So he's up almost 30 cents on the calls. But it's all, again, it's all the calls. The puts are a completely vestigial part of the equation right now. Sir. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, why don't they go down? Why don't those puts go down? You know, because of all the strikes. You know, <laughs> I don't know how much. Um, but what the heck? They'll they'll keep trying. Maybe it'll work when they after the fifth time. You know, I don't know. Thirty. Oh, he sold him for thirty five cents. I take it back. So he has gotten twenty cents out of them. So those are a little better than I thought. Uh, so yeah, he's doing all right. But yes, it could be uh, could be better. Intriguing stuff. What do you think of VIX risk reversals? You know, I like myself a good bullish risk reversal, but I don't tend to do them in VIX all that often for I think reasons that are becoming obvious out here. But number three, we got the July 22 puts on Wednesday, 53,000 of those. Number four, the July 24 puts, 33,000. Rounding out the top five on the most active day of the week, 27,000 of the June Turti puts. Tuesday, 453,000 contracts on the tape. It was a lot of puts, a couple of calls sneaking in there as well. 23,000 of the June 22 puts for number one. Number two, 22,000 of the AUG 20 puts. Number three, 20,700 of the June 25 calls. Number four, we got the June 30, 16,000 of those. And rounding out the top five on Tuesday, 15K of the AUG 21 puts going out to August. And then Monday, one of the lightest days of the week. Actually, so far, yeah, it is the lightest day, 326,000. So not a lot of love on Monday either. The big dog on Monday, 30,000 of the June 26 puts, followed by 30,000 as well of the Ju excuse me, the July 30 calls. Number three, 25,000 of the June 25 puts. Number four, 18,500 of the June Turti Fives and rounding out the top five on Monday, almost 18,000 of the June 29 puts. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catch your eye in this week's mostly light VIX options paper until today? Um, I, the thing I saw the most actually was just crazy put volume early in the week, like in the, in the 25s, the 24s, um, stuff like that. I saw that early in the week. Um, it felt like all during the week, uh, the paper – was feeling that the number was not going to be bad, at least by, you know, there would be like a vol crush after the CPI. I think that's what the paper was looking for. Um, I think this is a, this is a pretty strong reaction over the last, I mean, SPX down 5% is, you know, that's a, that's a fairly good sized move. So paper was definitely looking for a vol crush and trying to ride that into the expiration cycle of next week. 
it still could happen. It just isn't happening today, <laughs> for sure. But you know, how how really low does VIX get? You know, by by expiration, I don't know, maybe twenty five, twenty six, something like it could happen. It will get um, there the day after my puts expire. That's when it will happen. Yeah, I think. Yeah, what is that? That would be the uh, the sixteenth and the seventeenth. That. The day that VIX dies, two days. Yes, mark it on your calendars. Mark it on your calendars right now, listeners. (laughs) (laughs) The death of VIX. (laughs) The 16th. (laughs) Ah, yes. So many good things happening in the world of vol these days. Let's get on out to some of our favorite, or perhaps your least favorite, depends on your point of view, uh, new additions to the vol landscape. Let's go out to SVIX first. You know, Mr. Rock Lobster for... All the sturm and drong going on around SVIX when it launched. Should it exist? Should it not exist? How could the regulators dare to approve such a monstrosity in the modern age? Won't someone think of the children for all that noise, all the sound and fury? Signifying a lot of nothing right now, Mr. Rock Lobster, because uh, the SVIX at about a 1080, getting some of it back now as VIX is kind of mitigating a little bit. It was down about half a point, a little over, about six-tenths of a point kicking off the show. It's only down about a third of a point right now. And in terms of volume, it's doing a heck of a lot of nothing right now. 350 contracts only today. So no love for SVIX today, which is kind of interesting, at least from an options perspective. We talked about the underlying in the past. That's a little bit of a different story, but we're not here to talk underlying. We're here to talk about the options. Uh, the ADV also cratering as well. The ADV is down to 546. That's down another 150 contracts over this past week. So SVIX, not exactly blowing the doors off. Let's look really quickly at some of the top positions out there. The biggest position in SVIX right now are the June 13 calls expiring next week, a whopping 478 of those, followed by 326 of the June 11s, 325 of the June 12s. And then someone's got 300 of the Jan 2024 2s, 2.0 calls on. (laughs) Okay. And uh, yeah, number five, let's just do a top five. Why not? June 11 puts 255 of those bad boys. So yeah, whole heck of a lot of nothing for SVIX, but a different story entirely when you get out to UVIX, which is, of course, the 2X levered product listeners. Uh, coming into the segment, it was about 17 and a quarter. That's down about two points. It has has popped a little bit since then. It's up to about 1760 or so. So that puts it down about 1.4 points now on the week. We're seeing some numbers out there today. First off, the ADV, again, like everything else this week, kind of came in a bit. It's down to about 24, 21, down 100 contracts. But it's blown the doors off that today. Already 3,711 contracts on the tape. That's not a lot for most products, but for this kind of new product, that's actually a heck of a lot of paper. Now, before we get to what's lighting it up out there today, let's get out to the uh, top position. Let's do a quick top five in Ubix. Number five, we got 1,031 of the June 50, excuse me, the January, out to January 15 puts. A lot of Jan positioning out here again number four 1500 of the june 19 calls number three 2001 interesting film i'm not sure if these puts are as interesting the d18 puts number two 2269 of the july 27 calls and the number one position in ubix right now 3582 of the july 19 calls that's actually a pretty sizable position for this product out there so someone Loading up, it seems like, again, we have to look and see. Maybe they're overriding those, but it looks like they're loading up on the 19s, which is interesting. And again, 2X levered products, so a different type of paper going up out there. Before we even get to that, let's see what's going up today. Let's see. Uh, today, the big dog out there today, 600 of the June 18 calls, followed up for number one, followed by number two, 250 of the June 19s. Number three, 240 of the June 15 puts. Number four, 234 of the SEP 5s. An interesting strike. Looks like they might have been crushing those. And then number th- number five, 200 of the June 16 call. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on SVIX and UVIX these days? SVIX, not doing a heck of a lot from an options perspective, but UVIX uh, blowing the doors off, at least right now, sir. Um, So I guess the reality is I don't find them liquid enough. I don't trust the products anymore. Um, and I'm still trading a little UVXY. Um, but I, I have to be honest, I'm just, I'm sticking with the VIX. I'm going to start dipping my toe in the, uh, spikes and I do not like the under way the underwriters have managed these products. So I, I have to say as we're listing them, I look at them. Um, now the UVXY probably is not a bad put purchase today, I would say. Um, but for the most part, I am, I, I look at them. 
I nod my head at him and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I, um, and then I ignore them. So I, I think, I don't know, like I said, I'm, I'm still a little bit, uh, I have a, a little grumpiness toward these products and especially how they've managed uh, VXX. Such a big firm to mismanage the products the way they have. It's like, you know, like I think the SEC should find these people. I mean, I don't know what the heck the SEC is for if they're not finding these firms for mismanaging these products and just, you know, and I realize the tombstones they send out are like, basically we can do whatever we want and screw you. Um, so which everybody should know, but, um, that's kind of where I am on that. So I, at this point, I just prefer to just live in the, in the VIX world and I'm going to add spikes and, uh, and then see what happens. So I haven't, I haven't looked at UVXY very much. And if anything, the trades will be for like very short term, like, you know, one, two days, stuff like that. If I can, uh, um, if I can do it. Mr. Rock Lobster, Mr. Loggins is back because I just realized the show is over. Holy <laughs> we, jeez. We got so into I just I had, I did not I was like, wait a minute. What time is it? Oh my god, the show is done. So yes, we uh we gassed on, sir. A lot to talk about this week. We didn't even get to everything. My goodness. Didn't know, get to the ball why, voicemail. It's crazy town. Yes. Holy crap. I thought my clock was wrong. <laughs> Wow. So we're going to do a combo, sir. We're going to do a combo of your crystal ball guests. Oh, let's look at it quickly and see if anybody won. This week we were at 28. I was at 28.53. The meatball is at 26 and a quarter. And Matt from my ex was at 31 and a quarter. I actually wasn't looking. Oh, 28.62 on spikes. Tenth of a point. That's it, baby. Aha. Bullseye. Finally. Yes. Back in the bullseye zone. <laughs> Good thing I checked. <laughs> All right, I will take it. Bullseye. That's hard. Tenth of a point these days, listeners. You know how challenging that is. So, Mr. Meatball talking smack last week. When's the last time he got a bullseye? Answer, probably never this year. So, there you go. Take that. Suck on that, Mr. Meatball. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Rocklauster, I will be charitable. I will allow you to choose. You want to go first or last? Uh, I'll go first since you uh, since you got the hot streak. And I, plus, I like to say when you're going to scum me or not. So, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say we're going to 2401. We're going to stay in zone four Dang. We'll get back to the bottom. Dang, they're coming for it next week, huh? All right. Yeah. All right. 2401, says the Rock Lobster. Let's see. Will this be your first bullseye, perhaps, of the year? We shall find out. And uh, so I will go really quickly. I will think, looking at where we are right now, like I said, we're at about 2873 in spikes. And uh, where the heck are we in VIX land? We're at about 28 and a quarter in VIX land. Yeah, given the fact that they're not, even with the CPI number, we're not budging a heck of a lot here. Hmm. I don't hate a little bit lower next. I'm not quite as as low as the Rock Lobster. I'm going to say, I'm going to take mine down a whopping two points. I'm going to say 26 double, 26.55 for me. So that's me for next week, listeners. The Rock Lobster 2401. Mr. Rock Lobster, I appreciate you joining me and going long. <laughs> if folks want to learn more about what you got cooking in the land of the pit, where should they go? Uh, again, 888-TRADE-01, call 10. Uh, if you want to learn how to trade vol, uh, trade a back spread, trade a front spread, trade options, um, uh, and learn to use vol as an instrument to trade, uh, learn to trade delta neutral, 888-TRADE-01. Uh, and if you tell Ted you heard us at uh, Vol Views, you get 10% off any product. We've been in business for 10 years, and it's because our students like us. There you go. Our chat is accusing me of dragging on the show until it lined up with my ball prediction, which uh, <laughs> I wish I wish I was that Machiavellian listeners. No, I, I love our listeners now. They just went so high in my book. Like, they know. <laughs> they, they, are, know. they are a cynical bunch. They will accuse the Skullduggery at the drop of a hat. Out there, you know, we were just so caught up in the vol this week, listeners. Neither of us knew what time it was. So crazy. There you go. You got a little bit of extra bonus uh, show time. If you need a little bit more rock lobster in your life, don't worry. He'll be back joining me in a little bit for options oddities out there to break down the week that was for unusual activity. Of course, in the meantime, you know where to go to learn more about all things spikes. Myaxoptions.com slash spikes is the place to go. To learn more, we got to get on out of here, listeners. For all of you joining us in the on demand legions, we love you. We appreciate you. That will conclude your broadcast week. Again, for all of you in the pro, stay tuned. We'll be back for options oddities in a little bit. And wherever you're listening to us from, however you're listening, stay safe out there. And we'll see you back next week. Another episode of Volatility Views. 
Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 